Good Wednesday morning, everyone. I'm Carrie Lane in today for Eric Connor and I'm Nettie Rombor. Thanks for being with us and we're going to get right to a look at your forecast. Here's the view from Mount Soledad. It is a little cloudy again today, so I know that may be harder to get out of bed, but uh, we'll help you. We'll help you through it. Don't you worry. Your weather headlines look like this light morning rain in our forecast today. So patchy drizzle. That's likely what you'll see here and there throughout our county. Cloudy skies, windy conditions, and then our temperatures will stay cool today. We're looking at the 50s for our afternoon high, so that's way below average. The heat, though, comes back just in time for our weekend. All right, Jenny. Well, calm drive for you at 601. If you're heading out the door, this is what you get. Most of your freeways are fine. Coronado Bridge at the tail end, a little bit of volume. Careful here, though, on the 15. There's an earlier crash southbound side at the 78. It's off to the right-hand shoulder. No massive backups. Netta. Jenny, thank you very much. Now the rollout of the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, it's on hold right now across the country. That of course affects us here in San Diego too. Today, the CDC is holding an emergency meeting to review a handful of rare blood clot cases as it figures out what to do next. News 8's Evan Irani joins us live in Chula Vista with the very latest. Good morning. That's right. Good morning to you, Carrie and Netta. Six women had those blood clots, those rare blood clots that came after the Johnson & Johnson single dose vaccine. Out of an abundance of caution, now the CDC is recommending that states and counties put that vaccine on pause while they investigate. Today, a meeting scheduled where they're going to work on how to move forward from this. Now, the hope is that, of course, with this being less than one in a million chance that anyone receive any blood clot or any potential side effect for this vaccine that people will continue to feel confident in the safety and efficacy of the vaccine. They say that of course this just going to show that even with that less than one in a million chance of seeing any blood clot or reaction to the Johnson Johnson vaccine, they will still be putting it on pause for now. We will work to uh, reschedule any individual who had a J and J and give them priority. Six. That's one in quite literally a million. And so you have to put that in perspective. I had the J&J &J vaccine um, and had no side effects whatsoever. That advisory committee meeting being held today at 1030 as an emergency session to vote on what they call updated recommendations for use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. These guidelines are what counties, including here in San Diego, are following in their vaccine distribution process. Now, the state of California says they do not expect this pause to impact the state distribution plan by much. Only 4% of the vaccine allocation this week was the Johnson & Johnson. The White House adding that the pause will not have a side effect either or a significant impact impact, I should say, as there are enough doses of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine for every American. Now, many in San Diego do wonder if this change will just how they plan on opening up this window to every uh, American over 16 as of tomorrow. So April 15th is the date that San Diego County plans on opening that vaccine window to anyone. They say uh, Nathan Fletcher saying that this will not change that decision. Tomorrow will still be the day that anyone over the age of 16 in San Diego County can schedule that appointment. However, he does reiterate that that will cause significant strain on the number of doses that they have available and the scheduling process. So to make sure that you're continuing to be patient in the process, to wait your turn and to just continue to check up on the availability of those vaccines in your area. Of course, for now, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine distribution site, including the one behind us on pause for now. Some of those sites are adjusting by adding more Moderna or Pfizer vaccines to their distribution plan. However, that meeting is scheduled for 1030 today where they will discuss whether or not to open up the Johnson Johnson vaccine for distribution once again. Again, whether it be because those six women who saw those side effects maybe had one singular disorder that they then could single out for future doses. Uh, but of course, we will keep you updated on what comes of this. I'm Evan Narani, News 8. Evan, thank you so much. And of course, a lot of people have many questions about this coming up at 630. We will have a local doctor joining us live to talk about your concerns over the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and what you need to know if you already got that shot. School is back in session today after a standoff between SWAT officers and a wanted fugitive forced campus to shut down at San Diego High School. The 12 hour long standoff ended when the suspect was fatally shot by officers yesterday morning. Police say 36 year old Christopher Marquez and a passenger sped away from a traffic stop in National City Monday night and shot at pursuing officers. The two hold up in a dumpster at San Diego High School. Police say SWAT officers opened fire when Marquez pointed a rifle at the woman he was with. She was not injured. 
San Diego High, Garfield High, and East Village Middle College will resume on-campus learning today. Turning to a developing story in Minnesota, the officer who shot Dante Wright has resigned, and we may find out today if she will face charges for his death. And not far from where that shooting occurred over the weekend, the trial of former police officer Derek Chauvin is continuing today. And Skylar Henry is joining us live in Minneapolis right now with the very latest on both of these developing stories. Good morning, Skylar. Netta Carey, good morning to you. So let's talk about the latest with the Chauvin trial first. The defense is expected to continue to try to make its case today. We're going to perhaps hear from more medical experts saying why they feel as though it was, in fact, George Floyd's underlying health conditions and the drugs in his system that led to his death and not the maneuver Chauvin had on George Floyd's neck. That is expected to continue in just a few hours. In the case of Dante Wright, we're learning more as law enforcement made several arrests after after a third night of protests last night, officials there say members of the crowd threw bottles and bricks and even sprayed mace at some of the officers there. But as you mentioned, the officer involved in that case resigned yesterday, as did the police chief. April snow and a heavy police presence didn't stop protesters in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota on Tuesday. Police say these bricks, cans, and other objects were thrown at them last night. As the evening unfolded, the event Devolved. Earlier in the day, peaceful protesters marched through the streets, calling for justice in the death of 20 year old Dante Wright. It's been hard. It's been hard to have hope. Wright died following a traffic stop on Sunday when Officer Kim Potter allegedly mistook her pistol for her taser. The 26 year veteran resigned yesterday. The person's no longer a police officer uh, and they'll be held accountable for their actions. Potter said she believed her resignation would be in the best interest of the community. The Washington County District Attorney may decide today if any criminal charges will be filed against her. This mom is grieving. The family of George Floyd offered its support to Wright's family as they followed the murder trial of Derek Chauvin. We will fight for justice for this family, just like we're fighting for our brother. Yesterday, a use of force expert testified for the defense that Chauvin's actions were justified. In your opinion, was this a use of deadly force? It was not. Police officers don't have to fight fair. They're allowed to overcome your resistance. The prosecution pushed back. What part of this is not compliant? You know, a compliant person would have both their hands in the small of their back and just be resting comfortably versus like he's still moving around. Did you say resting comfortably? The defense has not said if Chauvin will testify. Now, just to give you an idea of how close this Brooklyn Center case is to the incident or the trial, I should say, here in Minneapolis at the Hennepin County Courthouse behind me, one of the jurors actually lives in Brooklyn Center. The defense actually asked for the jury to be sequestered and even questioned because of what's been going on in Brooklyn Center for the last few days. The judge overseeing this case denied that motion, but did say that the jury will be sequestered when closing arguments begin, which is expected to happen on Monday. Guys. Thank you, Skylar. Stay with News 8 for complete coverage of the trial of Derek Chauvin. We'll be covering the trial on CBS 8 and the CW San Diego. You can also follow us for updates across our social media platforms on the News 8 app and at CBS8.com. Let's check in with Netta. She's standing by for a look at our weather. Good morning. You know, I can tell you that this would be a great spot for lunch or dinner or whatever you like, even if it is cool. A lot of these restaurants, of course, have the heat lamps. They have the covers uh, and yeah, even that little spotty drizzle shouldn't ruin your plans. If you're heading beachside, it's a good kind of morning to go for that jog. Perhaps still a little slick on the roads because of that patchy drizzle that we're seeing. And look at this. Temperatures are cooler right now uh, compared to yesterday morning by a few degrees, one to up to five degrees cooler. As you see the desert, you're noticing that drop a little bit more. We're in the 50s for the most part. 53 Poway, 53 in El Cajon, 53 in Chula Vista, upper 40s for Ramona, for Alpine. That's likely where you're in the clouds right now. Our cloud level kind of hanging right there at the peaks of our mountains, so it is sitting up higher for most of our county, so you're not running into that fog this morning. But yeah, you'll notice this right here. Humidity levels, they're up again in the 80s, the 90s, even at 100% in Fallbrook. Same with Alpine. That's where those clouds are sitting. So higher elevations, you'll likely have to drive right through it. So please keep that in mind if you are headed through the mountain passes at all. It will also be windy through our mountain passes and our deserts. We'll get more into our upcoming warm up and a look at the weekend, even though it is just Wednesday here in just a few minutes.